Hello and welcome to Blog on the Range. And today I thought we'd do a bit of a nerdery around a point where I had some very, very virulent comments over the years. Um, it's a point that came up a lot uh, doing the Mad Minutes and things like that is that rear lockers have the uh, speed advantage that you've got the potentially shorter bolt throw. And since uh, time is distance divided by velocity or speed, um, it just gives you that little edge, that little extra potential for uh, for rapidity of fire there. And uh, this simply just comes out from geometry. But these these comments that I've uh, that I've been getting disagree very, very virulently about it. But um, what I thought I'd do is I'd show it with a number four and a Mauser. I'll show it again with um, a Swiss 1911 action and a K31. The same thing shows in self loaders as well. So I've got an AK and uh, an FAL. And there's two, broadly, exceptions I can think of to this rule uh, due to particular geometries of how they're set up. One of which I have and is a self-loader, and all the derivative designs have the same thing. And uh, the other of which I don't have, so I'll use some uh, photos and other footage, either mine or robbed from somewhere else. We'll see what happens when I get to the editing suite. So the basic point behind all of this is that in a rear locker, the front of the magazine is there. You've got the feed ramp, if any, there. And then you've got the breech face immediately there. So the cartridge, the back of the cartridge only has to go from the back of the magazine to there. And then the bolt can be locked in place. If we go over to a conventional rear locker, the back of the cartridge goes from there and ends up way down in there, like that. And you can see that's the thick end of about an inch or so. The bolt face ends up way down there and I've got basically almost all of the pink bit in there. And the reason is that the locking shoulders are here. So you've got magazine, feed ramp, and then you've got the locking, the locking shoulders. And let me just put my yeah, feel there, so there. The locking shoulders on the bolt there end up about there, breech face there. So the back end of the cartridge has to go all the way along there to its final resting place. Whereas here, the locking logs are right at the back, so it's literally just got to go that far there. So there's a fairly substantial reduction in the amount of, uh, the amount of bolt travel. And you can see this by looking, also by looking at the difference in length of, of the bolts as a result. So now with the straight pulls, we've got basically the same phenomenon. And uh, if we... So ignoring the crazy massively long bolt on the 1911 carbine here, um, bit of terminology, it's not as rear locking as an 1889, uh, but it's still locking behind the magazine. It's still a rear locker, it's just not a really, really stupidly rear locker. This wouldn't be, this wouldn't be um, any question at all if the 1889 hadn't had its logs right back up here. But anyway, we see again in the rear locker, we've got, there is no feed ramp on one of these. We have the breech face right there, right in front of the magazine. And on the K31, which is a front locker, again, we've got, oh, get it in there, breech faces, miles down inside. Again, most of the pink bit on my uh, on my pink pencil here. And here we do have a little bit of a, a feed ramp. But uh, basically you need the space for those locking lugs to go before they will lock because they lock up here and not back there. So I've taken the tops off of these so that you can see what's going on. And we've got a uh, Chinese Type 56-2 AK-47 variant here, and uh, it's nice and open. You can actually see that we have a locking surface there and a locking surface there. Um, 
you can see the gap between the locking surface there. So the magazine sits, sits back here and the breech face is there and you can see how that's going on. Obviously it doesn't make a blindest bit of difference from the user's perspective in a self-loader, but I think it's interesting all the same. And uh, L1A1, foul variant, that is rear locking tipping block. And if I hook it up, you see you've got a little feed ramp there, breech face is right there because it doesn't have to. Now the exception that I do have handy, and I find this is very interesting mechanical nerdery here, um, M1 Garand, um, and obviously all the derivative designs like the M1 Carbine M14 and all of that. This has, there's some very interesting bits of design in the M1, uh, in the M1 system. One of which is it's got a very, very short action throw and a very, very short action overall. Cause I mean, compare, compare to the foul. Get the center of shot. It's very, very short. I mean, even compared to an SKS, the SKS has a massively longer receiver than this. And what John Garan did, which is different, is rather than having a uh, sort of uh, long receiver ring like uh, like the Mauser or the uh, uh, or the K31, so you've got this huge, great long receiver ring with the locking lock, uh, locking surfaces, locking shoulders down inside it. What he's done is he's brought them back into the boltway and they're here and here. If you look there, so this is actually quite a good one. Let's try not to get M1 thumbed. So you can see there, if I zoom in, that again, the breech face can be right there, right in front of the magazine. And this is a 308, so it's got the block to stop you putting 306 in there. It locks back there. The disadvantage of this is that they're open to the elements. And this is one of the reasons why this type of system does not have great reliability in mud and cack because it can just get at all the important surfaces. And you've got this really great open rail on the side again, which can get full of it. Now the bolt action example that I don't have is a Craig Jorgensen because that feeds from the left side of the receiver and has a, uh, a single locking lug that locks into the bottom of the action and the action is sort of fairly rigid and solid along the bottom. And then it's got a, uh, a notch just behind the bolt face um, into which it locks. So uh, that's another way around it, but difficult to do with, uh, with two opposed frontal locking lugs. So uh, yeah. So there you go. I hope that was at least vaguely interesting uh, for what it's worth. If you enjoy this kind of complete and utter pointless nerdery, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Uh, please like and subscribe, etc., etc., etc. And uh, onwards and upwards with varying degrees of excitement or boredom uh, as your taste may uh, show. So thanks very much for watching and uh, see you again. Bye.